Okay, welcome everyone and greetings, good day. Uh, it's good to have you all here on our training for today where we're going to be looking at a very interesting concept in trading, a very, um, a, I say core concept in smart money trading, uh, which a lot of people don't seem to understand. We're going to be looking at that and breaking it down uh, to the best way I possibly can, okay? So uh, let's get started. My name is Nana Obina Alexander. I'm the head educator and senior market analyst at Anzu Capital. I'm a professional forex trader myself. I've been trading in the markets for about nine years, right about now. And I have I handle a lot of trainings, both online and physical trainings. You know, I think over the years I've probably um, had, um, taught or trained more than 6,000 persons. And, you know, I'm sometimes called the FX Jedi. I used to be the head market analyst at Gemini Capital Markets and Ivy Markets. I'm going to be your host for today. And let's jump straight into it. Okay, so here's what we're going to be discussing, or the content of what we'll be um, discussing today, uh, WICO, right? Um, now, some of you will be like, WICO, what the hell is WICO? Some of you will be like, yeah, WICO. I don't really understand that. And some of you who might understand it, um, well, you'd see how this can even make more sense or aid you in your trading, okay? So we're going to look at what Wyckoff theory is all about. Actually, we look at who Richard Wyckoff is. We'll look at his five-step approach to the market. Then we'll also take a look at uh, and a breakdown on the composite man. So who does he refer to as composite man? And then we'll look at the price cycle, how he defined price cycle, and the two schematics, or Wyckoff schematic, which is the accumulation and the distribution schematics. Now. Um, the first part of this class would be a little bit theoretical because I always like to have, I always like to um, basically lay a groundwork for uh, for you. So you might see me going through some texts, right? But it's just so you understand. You know, once you understand the why, it's easy for you to go on to make any to face any words, right? So I'm going to try and break down the whole idea behind why curve, the reason why it works and how it works. And then we'll look at the schematics and then we'll go over and look at some examples on the charts and put it all together into um, a core trading concept, okay? Now, what is Wyckoff theory all about? As a matter of fact, what is Wyckoff? Well, Wyckoff is um, gotten from, uh, is gotten from, is, is named after the man who uh, basically what I say, discovered the concept. His name is Richard Demille Wyckoff. He lived um, from 1873 to 1934. Now, who was he? He was actually one of the first, one of the main pioneers of technical analysis, right? So um, along with Dow, Gan, Elliot, and Mary. So we remember we discussed Elliot wave strategy in the last session. For some of you who were in the last class last week, we discussed Elliot wave strategy. Uh, Wyckoff was one of the contemporaries, or would I say, main personalities when it comes to uh, when it comes to technical analysis. And so we're going to be looking at his approach to the markets in terms of the Wyckoff schematics. Now, Wyckoff was an avid student of the markets. As a matter of fact, he was basically a broker, right? And he he observed the market activities of some of the big um, stocks. Now, here's one thing to note. The concept Wyckoff deduced was based on stock pricing, right? So looking at the stock prices and trying to make uh, bullish or bearish calls to them. Uh, but the same concepts can be applied to commodity tradings, to currency tradings, to any market, um, what I say, scenario, any market environment where price is traded, right? And there's enough volume in the market, okay? So by observing the activities of legendary stocks operators like JP Morgan, Levermore, he deduced something. He was able to identify some of the best, some principles and, and some methodologies that could enable retail traders who don't have as much capacity as this leg, um, legendary or big institutions to be able to profit from price movement, right? So from his position, he observed that numerous investors or numerous retail traders are repeatedly shaking off from the markets, right? This is something that some of you who are traders would understand in the sense where, uh, you know those times where you're trying to, you know, you get into a position, you see a strong level of resistance or a strong level of support or the demand or supply level, whatever it is you call it, and you're so confident, you see maybe confirmation, uh, send maybe a bullish candle or a, you know, whatever, maybe price is oversold or your indicator is telling you it's time to buy or time to sell, and you get involved in the market. 
you know, you place your stop loss, you put your targets, and all of a sudden the market comes, hits your stop loss, shake you out, and then moves in your way. And you keep wondering, why does this happen? Why is it that the market is always doing this to me? Now, Richard Wyckoff observed this phenomenon, and he observed that retail traders are repeatedly shaking off from the market. And so he deduced by, on, by studying price movement of stocks, he was able to deduce the whole Wyckoff theory, right? Um, I hope we're all following. Now let's make progress. Now he developed, he, you know, he formulated a five approach to the market. So in terms of, okay, how does he look at the market? What's, what are the phases within the market? And then he, he brought it down into some a five-step approach to the market. Now, Wyckoff methods involves a five-step approach to the market. So wherever you see stock here, you know, you can replace it with currency, with commodity, with gold, whatever. It's 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 a section. So it's basically his the five-step approach to stock selection and trade entry that can be summarized as follows. So the first one is determine the present position and probable future trend of the market. And what does that mean? Well, the market is either trending or ranging, right? So the market is either in a trend phase, and the trend phase can either be bullish or bearish, or the market is ranging or what you call consolidating. Now, um, basically, that is one of the first uh, approach. So you're looking who wants to watch what is the market doing? What is the structure of the market? Is it in its trend phase? Or is it in the consolidation phase? Now, after his, you know, um, you can you can tag this as demand and supply. Remember, demand and this, the the supply and demand indicates the direction that price is most likely going to go in the near future, right? Now, the next point is to select. Uh, he wants to select stocks or instruments in harmony with the trend. So. If some of you have also attended my class, you know that one of the things that hits more on is that you want to trade in the direction of the market, in the direction of the trend. This There's a saying that says the trend is your friend until it's broken. That is a statement of fact, right? Um, so Wyckoff says, uh, Richard Wyckoff determines, okay, well, once I determine the present position of the market relative to potential future trend or to the trend, well, I want to select, so he only wants to select trades or instruments in that. So if, Basically, what it means is I'm only looking to buy in the bullish markets, and I'm only looking to sell in the bearish markets, right? That's the whole summary of you know, this, this particular point, too. In a downtrend, price is most likely going to continue going down, right? And in an uptrend, price is most likely going to continue going up. So that's select trading harmony with the trend. The next point there is to select um, instruments, I'm um, replacing the word stock with instrument, with a cost that is equal to or exit your minimum objective. Now, the it might sound like a harmful, but basically the way it's, the explanation I can I would give here is, if you're planning to take a long position, you want to choose to buy or look for um, instruments where it's under accumulation phase. Now we'll come back to uh, our, would, when, in, in, as we're pushing forward. You understand what I mean by accumulation or reaccumulation. So if, if we're looking to buy, it's best to look to buy within an accumulation phase because that's going to give you the best possible opportunity. And if you're looking to sell, you're looking to you want to sell within a distribution or a redistribution phase. I'll explain that as we go further. Now, the next point will be to look for this, the readiness of the price to move. And then once you've determined the readiness of the price to move, you want to now time your commitments in such a way that you get in with least probable drawdown and potential maximum reward. Now, you're not going to be perfect at this at all times, but if you understand these concepts, you would stop feeling, you stop taking the movement to the market person now and start looking to understand the composite man. Now, who is the composite man? Now, um, why go? That he he, he 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 probably named out this phenomenon called the composite man. Now the composite man is not a singular person, but Wyckoff is treating. He decided that he's going to treat the major. Let's just call it the power that bees, right? He's going to treat the power that bees. Now it's usually not one institution. It's lots of large institutions. He's going to treat all of them as though they were one man, right? So you can think of the composite man as large institutions, at least the ones with the most largest volume and the most largest liquid in that particular market. So for example, the largest pusher of, let's say the largest, um, or the institution with the largest, uh, what do you call it? Um, 
volume in let's say euro usd might not be the same in gold or in aud card right in each of those different instruments there might be different composite man now the composite man is going to probably be a sum of of buyers or sellers that are looking to push price in one direction remember that your funds my fund and your funds do nothing in the market they are so small that they are negligible right but then there's enough a conglomerate of of um, of institutions or traders that okay, that they 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 basically are the power that be in the markets. Now it's like saying um, so. On one hand, there is three little children trying to drag a rope to the left, and then on the other hand, there are four wrestlers trying to pull the rope to the right. Well, the rope is most likely going to go to the right, almost certainly going to go to the right. Why? Because the force or the, the strength, there's enough, there's more than enough strength pulling to the right than there is pulling to the left, right? Now, here's how Wyckoff described the composite man. He says, all the fluctuations in the market, right? And in all the various stocks should be studied as if they were the result of one man's operation. So you're saying, the movement of price, that you know those times where you see it seems like price just shoots up, boom, or shoots down. He said, treat it as though it was the result of one man operation. Now we know it's not one man operation, it's the, you know, it's volumes where the where the um basically where the the uh the most volume is price is pushed in that direction, or the most liquidity is that price is pushed in that direction. So he's going to say, call that man the composite man. Now in his theory, it's as if you want to think as if you want to think of it this way, as if the composite man is sitting behind the scene, right, manipulating the prices of, of instruments to you to your disadvantage if you don't understand the game he's playing. And if you understand the game he's playing, you make a lot of profit. So this is actually you can go and look for this in the there's a book the Richard Wyckoff course in you know stock that's it I labeled down there section nine paragraph one and two right so you're saying imagine the major movement in the market as if so imagine you're sitting in front of your computer your computer trying to trade your does on one of those three little children on the left hand side and then there's four giant wrestlers on the right hand side trying to pull right well imagine the giant men as as composite man, the price is most likely going to their direction. But just because they have the uh, just because they have the power to pull price their direction, they would also want to collect your money because that's how they make money, right? You don't. The only way to make they make money is by, is if there are other people's money to be able to grab or or to serve as liquidity, right? So this is you start to see. Don't worry, as you push further, you start to see how this all comes to life. Now. Next point that I would look at is that, so what Wyckoff then decided to, he said he advised retail traders to try and play the market game as if the composite, just as the composite man plays it, right? So like saying, well, if you're going to beat a lion, pound for pound, you can win because the lion is stronger, it's faster, it's more agile, right? So it's like, well, if you and the lion is running after a particular, um, like, or, animal right so you're trying you're in a competition with, with with a stronger person most likely you're going to do this because pound for pound the person is stronger right so if the person is stronger if it's a lion but what you can do is so take take a what i say a hyena for instance well pound for pound the hyena cannot stand the lion however the hyena will stay close to the lion enough such that once the lion makes a kill and then turns his eye away the hyena can, you know, jump in, grab a few bites, and you know, obviously have his own meal. Now, in the same way, right? You want to think of the lion or the composite man as the main player. Your your job or what you want to do is to try and play the game the same way the man plays it. Because you play, if you go against the composite man, because you don't have as much volume or as much. Um, liquidity and depth as he does you're most likely going to lose not most likely you're definitely going to lose right especially if you stubbornly refuse to give up so in fact he claimed that it doesn't matter if the market moves are real or artificial uh, that is the result of actual buying and selling by the public or by artificial buying and selling by large operators so here's what that statement here means 
in the market, right? What makes price go up? So for instance, remember during the time of COVID, right? In the period of COVID, um, one of the main, um, so one of the major uh, things that was selling was face masks. Before COVID, fix mask was not really a thing. Nobody really uses face masks except your medical practitioner. But during COVID, well, everybody started to use face masks. What happened? There was not enough face masks, right? And there was so much demand for the ones available. And what happened to the price of face masks? Well, it went from around 20 naira per, uh, you know, I think you could get, before COVID, you could get three face masks for around 20 naira from a pharmacy. However, after COVID, or during COVID, at some point, one face mask I was selling for around 500, 800. I remember buying face masks for 800 because I, you know, I needed it. Well, the reason price went up was because of actual buying and selling. There was real demand and supply in the market, right? There was real demand for that, which cost price to go up. So that's a real price movement. On the other hand, there's the artificial price movement. So imagine that there's no COVID, right? And then somebody begins to um, begins to hold all the face masks. So one person buys all the face masks or most of the face masks, and then there is it's not as if there is demand, lots of demand for it. But because one person has bought almost all the face masks available, he can push the price of face masks up, artificially manipulating price. Right now, that is you know artificial manipulation of price versus real price movement. So Wyckoff is saying what he's stating is it doesn't matter which of this price is doing, but by looking at the way price is operating or the way price is moving, you can deduce and figure out what the composite man is doing, right? And when we go over to the um, to the Wyckoff schematic phase, you see how we can begin to identify that. Now let's also jump over and look at Wyckoff price cycle. Now according to Wyckoff, price is always within three phases, so it's within you know ranging trending, ranging. So it's going within those phases. So as you can see here, the market is oversold. And then there's, it's, it's an accumulation phase, right? So when market is down, oversold, the market undergoes an accumulation phase where a lot of the, um, the price or the instrument is accumulated. And then that accumulation pushes price upward. And then at some point, the market becomes overbought because price is now too high and it enters a distribution phase, which then push price down. So there's an accumulation phase, there's a markup, there's the um, distribution phase, and then there's the markdown. Now, the idea about WIPO is to take advantage, is what he's basically trying to do is to take advantage of the trend, right? So basically the whole idea is to try and, uh, listen, let me get my pen. No, 